Oh, yo, that would be like the sickest plot twist. But I'm gonna need her to hurry up and get kidnapped, okay? Not everything is about you, lover boy. Like, <laughs> back up. So I keep poking holes in the plot. It's your girl Jay and today I am here with a follow-up video. Previously, like a month ago, I did a blind try your chapter tag where I read the first chapter of these four books and then I said that I was going to leave it up to you guys to choose which books that I was going to read first and I would do dedicated vlogs for each of them. If you have no idea what I'm talking about then I will leave the link to that video down below. You guys can go check it out so you're all caught up on what's going on. The book that you guys chose for me to read first were between two of them. They basically had like the same amount of hype between them two. It was the kidnapping book and then the book about the twins who were pretending to be another girl who I don't know if it's like their triplet and she died or something I don't really know but they're both pretending to be this one other girl but they're twins but I've decided that I'm going to read the kidnapping story first just because it's shorter I'm currently in exams right now so I just thought that a shorter book would be easier for me to digest because my brain just doesn't want to focus on things you know because exams because I don't actually know what book this is obviously because it's covered um I can't really say you know spoilers for this book other than saying there is going to be spoilers in this vlog just because that's the way this is going to be set up I'm basically just going to be reading this book and then giving my thoughts while I'm reading it trying to figure out what book it is pretty much all I know about it is from the first chapter it's about a girl named Savannah Taylor she does kung fu and her mom is in an abusive relationship and then the second chapter because I kind of cheated and read on because the second chapter was like two pages long and the first chapter was like three pages so I just didn't think it was fair to not read more you know and also I was intrigued so I cheated but the second chapter follows a guy named sir who is on the hunt for the perfect girl he like follows them in his car and he like writes in this little notebook about what makes them like a good girl and like ranks them out of 10 and he's trying to kidnap them I'm assuming eventually when he finds the perfect girl my prediction is that he is going to try to kidnap Savannah but because she does kung fu she's gonna just like fucking kick his butt which I am here for because ew kidnapping is gross and also kick-ass female but obviously I have no idea what's gonna happen I'm starting chapter three which is only eight pages into the book so I mean We'll see what happens and I will update you guys when I have a thought, I guess. I'm just gonna leave like the name of the book in the description box if you guys don't wanna be spoiled on this book. When you figure out what it is, like it'll be down there. If you don't wanna be spoiled, then stop watching, I guess. But I hope you stick around because I think this is gonna be a fun video, hopefully, and it's not boring, but who really knows we'll see but I'm gonna start okay, reading now so I'm now page 14 so I haven't read that much but the whole third chapter was about a boy named Daniel who Savannah is crushing on and he's also in her kung fu classes at the recreation center or whatever I'm going to be so mad if Savannah ends up getting kidnapped and then Daniel comes and saves her and it's like this stupid men saves the day kind of thing. She better be the one to save herself because I don't need another boy comes swooping in saves the girl story, okay? So if that's what ends up happening, I'm giving it a two star. I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> okay, so I'm on chapter four and this Daniel guy is in her kung fu class and they're now partners. He's almost a black belt and she's only an orange belt, but they're partnering up for counter moves and they have to do a kiss touch which is just like a light touch to prove that like you have control and blah 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 and she's going on and on about how a kiss touch makes her all fluttery inside because of it being about her and Daniel because you know she wants to be kissed and touched by him if this turns into a romance I'm gonna be so annoyed I just want a bitch to get kidnapped okay and to kick some butt that's all I'm asking for and that's not what I'm getting so far so I'm gonna need her to hurry up and get kidnapped okay okay we're getting a little bit of foreshadowing the kung fu master guy and he's talking about how because we don't want to break our partners we're constrained in what we can practice at full force but remember if you're fighting for your life there aren't any rules when you're attacked 
fighting dirt is, is exactly what you should do. Bite, pull hair, knead their corn, scratch their eyes. His usually playful black eyes were serious. When your life is on the line, you have to do everything you can. This bitch is gonna beat this guy up and I'm so excited. I'm here for it. And now apparently we're getting a chapter from Daniel's perspective. So, ooh, what if he ends up being Sir? And then she's gonna beat him up. Oh, yo, that would be like the sickest plot twist. I'm gonna be mad now if that doesn't happen. I hope Daniel's Sir. I hate Daniel already. He is so annoying. Right now he's mansplaining what telegraphing a move means to Savannah. Like that's fine, you can explain things to people, but the way he's doing it, he's like, oh, Bruce Lee's the best martial artist and he never telegraphed a thing in his life and do you know what that means? And she's like all swoony that he's actually talking to her and I'm like, bitch, if a man mansplains things to me, I'm just like, okay, move along, I'm done with you. And like this whole chapter is about how he didn't notice her before, but then he saw her reading in the cafeteria a book about Bruce Lee and now he's noticed her because she can read and she does kung fu and it's like hmm. Hmm. I'm only 28 pages in and I'm already sick of him so I'm again really hoping he's sir and he's gonna get his ass kicked but I'm one page farther Daniel just asked Savannah to the dance and she says no because remember the boyfriend is abusive they just had a fight and he like grounded her and so she says no because she doesn't think it's a good idea to like test him Daniel immediately goes oh I know why you're saying no it's because you don't like me it's like not everything is about you lover boy like <laughs> back up his whole spiel when she says sorry i don't think it would be a good idea he says i filled in the blanks she didn't like me she only liked me because i could throw a spinning hook kick she had a boyfriend she thought my obsession with bruce lee was weird it's like sh i'm just so over this guy like he better get his ass kicked real quick like this is literally the second time that they're talking the first time was in the cafeteria when he noticed that she was reading the book and now this is the second time and he's asking her out and she's saying no so even if it wasn't because of the boyfriend, Tim, like, accept it. You guys literally have not had more than 20 words to each other. Like, it's, a woman is allowed to say no to you, Daniel. She's allowed. And it doesn't have to be just because she thinks you're fucking weird, even though she probably should because you've literally talked twice. So she just got kidnapped. She got stabbed in the butt and stabbed in the thigh with i'm assuming knockout stuff but she hit her head on the ground and now she doesn't feel anything the next chapter i'm assuming is when we're gonna find out who takes her so it's obviously not daniel which is disappointing but not surprising savannah's now in the back of the truck and her hands are duct taped and all this thing and she's like going through what happened and she's like memories slowly came back going up the stairs my thoughts preoccupied with daniel so clearly the moral of this whole story is don't waste your time thinking about men or else you're gonna get kidnapped so there you go now you all know men ain't shit okay i'm still on the same page she said that she was trying to figure out like the man's voice and if she had heard it before but she said that he smelled like motor oil and cigarettes which is what tim the mom's boyfriend smells like and if this ends up being tim as the kidnapper i'm gonna be so annoyed because that is so cliche so i'm like really hoping that it's not tim two stars two stars so savannah just jumped out of the moving van but her arms were like duct taped so she just like fell and like broke herself basically but i found a loophole plot hole whatever you want to call it she says in her little like rundown standing over me sir swore she doesn't know that his name is sir that's what it like calls him in the book but she has no idea that that's his name so plot hole or i'm just reading way too into this the next chapter is from a girl named jenny dowd and she's saying that there's a dog named rex outside barking right and then she goes on to say that she's scared of rex because last time he like attacked her and then it says trying to race my calming heart i sucked in a breath rex was outside out there he couldn't hurt me again outside there was a rattle as sir undid the padlock so is she like another kidnapped girl so now there's two girls very intrigued very scared for savannah 
oh, she gonna die. But she's also like unconscious right now from the pain of jumping out of the van. I mean, like I would probably not have jumped out of the van just because I'd be too scared to do anything and I'd probably just be like crying in the back. So I mean, kudos to her for jumping out, but also what did you think was gonna happen? You were literally duct taped. So, okay, so she's a stolen girl and apparently this sir man has rules and they include always call you sir, never look you in the eye, never talk back, dress attractively, keep things picked up, don't make noise, and be grateful that he keeps them alive. I don't like this sir man. Not that you're supposed to obviously, but, <laughs> and he has a taser in case they do anything bad. He tases them. Jenny's been with him for 10 months, so I'm uh, thinking that she ain't getting rescued anytime soon. And apparently he took Savannah because Jenny now has this huge scar on her face because Rex, the dog, attacked her. And so now she has a scar, so now Sir doesn't think she's attractive anymore, so he stole Savannah. So what's gonna happen to Jenny? Is she gonna get, like, murdered? Okay, so we just got another chapter from Jenny's perspective. And oh my god, it's so depressing. She's talking about how she, like, feels bad for Savannah and obviously doesn't want her to be there. But she's actually, like, kind of happy that she's there because she's been living by herself with, like, no human contact for 10 months other than Sir, and like Sir's scary obviously, but she's like worried for Savannah to wake up because her face is all like scarred and like her left nostril like hangs down and like she has a huge like hole in her lip from the dog attack and stuff, so she doesn't want to scare her and I'm like, oh, this is so depressing. <laughs> okay, I found another like kind of plot hole. Daniel, the boy, his dad, Michael Diaz, is a school security guard for the school that Daniel goes to, which I feel like would be a conflict of interest, but also Savannah's mom just came to him being like, yo, my daughter didn't come home, I don't know what to do, like, where is she? And then she finds out that Michael is Daniel's dad, and she's like, Daniel's the last person to see her before she went missing, so now his son is involved, so again, conflict of interest, I don't really think he would be allowed to investigate because apparently he's like in charge of multiple schools, but he's not a security guard, he's a cop. But I'm pretty sure a full-on cop would not be just a security guard at a high school, but whatever, it's fine. But again, conflict of interest. Okay, so we just got our first perspective from Tim, the boyfriend. He's getting interrogated by Daniel's dad, the cop, and he's like asking about like what happened to Savannah and like why she ran away, blah, blah, blah. And he starts going on like his inner monologue is all about how when he was 16, he had to learn how to grow up and Savannah is so spoiled and blah, blah, blah. And he starts talking about how his step dad is in jail because he got reported by Tim to the police for like assaulting his little sister and I'm assuming it's sexual assault and then he talks about how he was the only father that he knew and he was the one who taught him how to gut a fish and like he really loved gutting the fish and he's like talking about how he like really loved gutting the fish and like splitting it open and watching its tail move and like ripping its guts out and like feeling nothing about it like, okay so is this supposed to be like setting him up to be like a psychopath is that what's happening and then Michael asks him about his arrest for driving under the influence and then he starts talking about how the car was his dad's car before and then Michael goes oh yeah what about the other arrest for domestic violence so like is it Tim who's doing the bad things to the girls we don't know because he like grew up around sexual abuse and domestic violence and he likes cutting open fish and feeling nothing so like hmm but I bet she was just supposed to be like throwing us off the actual killer or not killer because he hasn't killed anybody but kidnapped so, her. Savannah is convinced that Tim is the one that takes her because Jenny tells her that she thinks that they're in like an old junkyard and then she starts talking about the old car that Tim had and how she used to have to go with him to go pick up parts at this old junkyard. She's like, it kind of makes sense at least as much as anything does. He hates if you question him. He calls it disrespectful and talking back and he goes out at night a lot when my mom's at work. She's working swing shift. He never says where he's going. Maybe he's coming here to see you. Is it Tim? But that would be like way too obvious. So it's definitely not him but also it could be Tim 
Savannah's actually like really smart. So right now her and Jenny are trying to like figure out ways to escape. So there's like a vent at the top of the RV that they're being held and she was trying to find things that would fit into the screws so she could like unscrew them. They obviously don't have like knives or screwdrivers because those could be used as weapons. So she goes to her wallet and she tries to use coins but they're too big and then she ends up finding CDs because I guess Sir gave them CDs to entertain themselves. She uses the CD, which like I wouldn't have ever thought of. Like she's actually really smart and now she's making nunchucks out of a pair of tights and soup cans. Like I would have just thrown the soup cans at the dude and hoped for the best but she's like making a whole ass weapon and it's probably because she's like into Bruce Lee and Kung Fu and stuff so she knows about nunchucks but like I would have never thought of that she's actually really smart and she's going to teach Jenny how to do some Kung Fu moves so that they can escape hopefully a like escape montage is coming soon so Savannah's teaching Jenny the Kung Fu it was cool until the point she went my mind drifted to Daniel like Bitch, you are in a kidnap situation and you're still thinking about the dude that you've had two conversations with. I just, I feel like there's more pressing matters at hand right now than to be thinking out about a boy. Daniel just went back to the dojo to like investigate what happened to Savannah and like look for clues. And he ends up finding her hat in a bush outside near the parking lot and what I want to know is why if the dojo is the last place that Savannah was seen why would the cops not have already gone to look and see if there was anything like suspicious around there it's been reported that she's missing so wouldn't that be like the first place that they would have searched and found the hat Daniel found the hat on Saturday she apparently went missing on Thursday and the police never went to the parking lot to go check it out and find the hat. But no, the boy obviously goes and finds the hat because teenage boys always saving the day, makes sense. But then Daniel is the one who notices that there is a security camera at the dentist office across the street from the dojo in the parking lot. And so Daniel goes into the dentist office and is like, yo, what up? Uh, this is my friend's hat. She went missing uh, at the parking lot on Thursday. So I'm gonna need to look at your video camera footage and the dentist receptionist lady's like whatever kid go away and then he gets his dad to come and the dad's the cop and so he gets to go look at the footage with Daniel which would not happen so but then they see Savannah's entire kidnapping on camera and like hello that should have been done when she was reported missing like I don't understand this timeline right now but now they know that the dude wears work boots and coveralls and drives a white van and they immediately think that it's Tim so Tim's still the bad guy always the bad guy we're getting another chapter from Sir's perspective and apparently when he was 18 he joined the um, service which I'm assuming is like military so he's got some training Savannah and Jenny may have some you know trouble if He's got military training. Somebody's gonna get real hurt, and I, I am assuming it's gonna be the girls. That sucks. But apparently his father was abusive and made them call him sir, and that's why he makes the girls call him sir, because it's like a sign of authority and respect. So, like father, like son, I guess. The dad, the like abusive one, he died from a engine block falling on his chest, so sir left the military and moved back home to run his dad's like junkyard the mom now takes care of him and he's on like dating websites and his mom is like telling him everything that's wrong with the woman on the dating site and she said that he should find a woman like her and when she met the dad he was in his 20s and she was still in middle school and they got married and fell in love and blah 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 the mom's also fucked like this whole family like what like you you were in middle school and were dating a 20 year old that is called uh, pedophilia and I don't <sighs> not that the mo like the mom was obviously groomed but like this th don't tell your son to go date a middle schooler what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing okay so I was making fun of how Tim was talking about the old car that his dad gave him, but it turns out it's actually important. Sir actually saw Savannah for the first time when Tim dragged her to the car 
junkyard to pick up parts for the old car and Sir thought that she was being super disrespectful because she spent the whole time with her face in her phone and so he decided that she was going to be the next girl that he kidnapped so that he could teach her a lesson and he ended up getting her address from like the files I guess at this junkyard and followed her home and like followed her to kung fu and that's how he kidnapped her so really it is still technically Tim's fault and I can blame him because he dragged Savannah to the car park which she obviously didn't want to go to so still blaming Tim Tim's a bad man not that we didn't establish that already sir knew that Savannah took kung fu and he chose her for that reason because he was like oh she can put up a fight and it'll be like thrilling and exciting for me and now he's like mm, might have made a mistake there you know when she like jumped out of the moving van and so he's decided that he's just gonna kill both Jenny and Savannah so he goes under the RV and like takes the fresh water tank and empties it so that they're gonna die from dehydration I guess and then apparently he also has another RV set up in the junkyard as well that was supposed to be for Savannah but he ended up putting her with Jenny which I'm not really sure why he says that it's to like get her to understand the rules quicker like Jenny will teach her but also like are you stupid so now he's decided that he's gonna kill Jenny and Savannah and then kidnap another girl how has nobody noticed that all these girls are going missing like I'm pretty sure people are gonna catch on and like you're just posting up RVs all around the junkyard like people go to the junkyard are they not gonna be like wow you have yet another RV what what are you doing it's got a padlock across the door like what what's your excuse dude this is just a downward spiral for me now because I just I keep poking holes in the plot the cop just showed up at Savannah's mom's house to like question her, well, to question Tim about the coveralls and the boots. And he's not home, he's at work, so he ends up showing the footage to the mom. And he like asks her, oh, do they look familiar? And she's like just kind of sitting there like, oh, like, I don't know. And he's like, oh, do you think they could belong to Mr. Hickson, who is Tim? I'm pretty sure that... As a cop, you're not allowed to ask leading questions like that. But again, who am I to know the way of cops? But I'm poking holes in all the plots because that is not allowed. Daniel is currently trying to find this white van that took Savannah and he's basing it off of the license plate on the video that said SVT. And then he goes on to explain that in Oregon that the license plates have letters first and numbers second and it used to be numbers first and letters second and that there has like 999 options so that means that there's 1000 possible vehicles that could have the license plate that this van has because SVT 000 would be the 1000th and then all the way up to SVT 999 and he's like oh the vehicle would have to be older than seven years because my mom uh, her car starts with three numbers and ends with three letters so that means that it's older than that but also what van would still be on the road for 15 to 20 years which my thing is is that does he not realize that they can just change the license plate like you can just unscrew it and literally change it to another car adding another thing to the Michael Diaz is a terrible cop list he gets home from Savannah's mom's house after he like searches the house and finds guns and like Tim's been arrested for assault and stuff of the police officer because he punched him because he got accused of taking Savannah he returns home and Daniel comes up to him and he's like dad oh my god did you find anything and he's like if I tell you it's for your ears only and I'm pretty sure you can't discuss the cases with your son especially when he's involved but okay Michael so the girls just escaped and now we're on Daniel's perspective and he's like oh I can't sleep oh my god I can't stop worrying about Savannah I'm gonna google this like van and find it because my dad said that it was this license plate because he looked it up so he googled it and it got sent to the junkyard so he's like you know what I can't sleep anyway so I'm gonna go to the junkyard to check it out and I swear to god if this is a Daniel Diaz saves the day novel I'm gonna be so mad because <laughs> the girls are currently climbing the fence to get out of the junkyard but there's barbed wire all on the top and the chapter ended with then we heard a shout so obviously sir is coming but I swear to god if Daniel ends up being the one to like find sir and kill them all and you know save the day 
just going to be so, so disappointed. Okay, so the girls ended up knocking Sir out with like some metal car piece. And now Savannah is dragging him to a car and like binding his wrists with her kung fu sash. But my thing is, is that Savannah is doing this by herself because Jenny's passed out because she got strangled by Sir. She's dragging this 40 year old man to the car, but she's doing it one handed because she has a broken wrist. And then she's tying the sash with one hand because it's been stated like multiple times and she can't use that wrist and it's broken and blah, blah, blah. But you're strong enough to drag a 40 year old man who I'm assuming is like a big man because he's apparently scary so in my head like a, a, a man who's scary is like a bigger man but okay more plot holes but the good thing is is that there's only like four pages left of the book and we have not seen Daniel Diaz to come and save the day yet I'm sure it's gonna happen but I will be disappointed when it does Daniel showed up with three pages to go so <sighs> three months later it's like the epilogue and Jenny went to the hospital and she's fine and got all these like plastic surgeries to fix her face and stuff and it's three months and she's already back at school which I feel like if you've been kidnapped for 10 months I feel like you should take a little bit you know more time to yourself to like be okay and go to therapy but um nope and then Savannah is going to kung fu class and she is in a cast for her wrist, but she's she's still doing kung fu, which I feel like you should probably chill for a little bit and let your body heal. But you know, she also got stabbed, but that doesn't matter because kung fu is more important. Also, Jenny is also taking kung fu lessons. They're just becoming little crime fighting, sir, butt kicking women. You go, girls. <sighs> I think I'm gonna give it a three. Like, it wasn't a bad book, but I found so many plot holes that I just got annoyed with at this point. And Daniel Diaz freaking saved the day, and I just. I don't like the boy coming in and saving the day when there's a kick ass girl who can do it herself. But no, obviously the boy has to save the day. But now it's time for the reveal to find out what this book is. I still have no idea. I'm gonna guess that it's called like something about a van or like something about the kidnapping or maybe it's like called Savannah or like the missing girl or something like that. The missing girls, the white van, I don't know. Daniel Diaz sucks, I, I don't know. No, but let's see. Ready? Oh, I do know what this is. This is an arc that I got like a while ago. It's The Girl in the White Van by April Henry. So I got White Van and I got Girl for Missing Girls. But now the cover makes sense because I was always confused why there was two girls because there's two girls. Uh, oh, and you can see her scar too. I never noticed that before. Interesting. Let me know down below if like this was enjoyable or not and I'll do the other three blind book challenges. I know that the next one that you guys wanted me to do was the twin one. So that'll be the next one. If you guys actually want me to continue this series, let me know. And thank you for joining me. It was fun and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!